Hey guys, Dustin here, and today we have the Canik TP9 Elite Combat. Now, I've been playing with this thing for a few months now, because anything I shoot, I like to bring it to you, and then, um, you know, after shooting a couple hundred, or if not, over a thousand rounds to it. And this is one of those, and so I've gotten a good look at it, and I, I wanted to play with it first off because I had some friends tell me, just, keep, you know, get that Canik, get that Canik. I remember handling one years ago, and I thought it was a Walther, because if you look at the back there, it looks exactly like a Walther like the the old at least i think the ppq still have that indicator and so i was like man that's kind of cool because i have an old p99 and it's one of the best factory stock triggers that that that, that there is and so the canic has a great trigger as well but they're also affordable and so i asked canic to send me one and they sent me the top of the line one i was expecting just the the low you know everyday man they're they're ones that run under 400 bucks but we got this and i'm glad it did because there's just a lot of neat features and so we'll go over that real quick and then we'll shut up and shoot now starting at the bottom they did a lot with salient arms and so you have a salient arm a magwell right here now it's it kind of crunches grip a little bit as i guess if you're for comfort level, it's a little much. Uh, take it off and it feels like my hand fits on it better, but it's a lot like they're taking uh, a, a Glock 19 style grip. I gotta put my Glock in front of it because, so you can see uh, the Glock's just actually a touch smaller, but not much at all. And now I had to do undercut on this Glock, but uh, so your hand fits well, and while I shoot it, it's fine, but just, and, and then you got the Magwell, of course, but you know, uh, it, just handling it, it feels a little crowded, but it works. You have um, extended and interchangeable, we could say, mag buttons right here. And of course, it's going to be ambidextrous if you need it to be. But uh, so you have different sizes. This is the medium right here. It worked and it came on it like that. So I was just going to roll with it. The trigger. That's where I really love it. And you can tell just by the nice flat trigger right there that it's, it, 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 hopefully it shoots as good as it looks, right? And it does. And when I was measuring it, it, it came in about four and a half pounds which is great because with well, that Glock 19 the only thing stock on this anymore is the trigger six pounds ten ounces of uh, four pounds and five ounces is excellent and it, the, the just the take up and the travel is just amazing and something that you really will never need a custom job on because it kind of already comes it so you've got some take up right there we're gonna get a, a little bit more like kind of like a two-stage thing and then a nice click break okay at four and a half pounds and then watch that reset there that was a reset and so amazing job on a stock trigger I, i'm all about that so uh, the first upgrade i tell anyone is to upgrade a trigger so you can shoot the gun better and this one comes just like that now if you notice i was pulling on this it actually has a slide charging handle the, of course it's removable and it only works if you're using the optics plate uh so but I like it. I, I just, because I, a lot of times I'll karate chop the, the, the RMR or something anyway. And so that just gives me something to hold on to. Now, in a holster, um, it will, uh, it, it, well, the one that they supply it with, it still fits. But of course, you know, it, it, this is more of an open slash competition type thing. Most guys are not going to be using that uh, for. D uh, <laughs> Okay, especially concealed carry. That's gonna dig right into you. That's stupid. But uh, you have that. Now, on the optics mounts. It's kind of a, it's ready to go, okay? So of course I threw the RMR on here. It, it has a plate for that. It'll fit Miopta, it'll fit with the Vipers, uh, I mean the Vortex, the Trijicon, of course, uh, Dr. Seymour, Leupold, and Shield, and J, oh, A-N-T, J-Point. So they have a typo in here, Ant, J-Point. Unless that's supposed to be an and. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be an and, but it's Ant. Okay. <laughs> That's what happens when you get your uh, instruction manual um, translated from Turkish, I suppose, because it's from Century Arms. So you have these four interchangeable bases that you can put in, and if even your sight uh, system, your rear sight is a base itself, a base and cover. So you will not have backup sights if, if you remove this to put your bases on. Now, these are kind of cheapy because if you look real close there, what you see is that that's actually a helicoil system. So I guess that's just a cheaper way to manufacture it. They can uh, change the thread pitches and just put a helicoil in instead of threading, or maybe it's just that this aluminum, of course, would not hold, uh, hold a good thread. That's probably really it. But my problem was all of the screws that came in my case, there's just a few of them, okay? So there's like four there. And when I put my RMR on, nothing fit. The thread pitches were wrong. And in the manual, it says, only use the uh, screws that come with the gun. 
So not the screws that come with your optic. And so I was looking at this, and I'm like, man, this is nothing right. I emailed back and forth through Century Arms three times, and they said, yeah, that's all the screws right there. And they, they, I sent them a picture of my box. I said, okay, these won't work because they're different sizes, and they're not tapered, the ones they told me to use. And then the tapered ones, I said, you need to use these. They just slide right in and out, okay? So customer service, mm, not so much. I expected them to say, hey, looks like we might be, you might be missing some screws. I'm gonna send you a whole set. They did not do that. Good thing is some of the um, uh, screws that were already in my RMR box fit this mount. So disaster averted because the problem with my, uh, my sights, okay, they're adjustable. This, again, this is a salient arm sights. You have a nice fiber optic front as well as a just, um, replaceable uh, fiber optics that come with it. There's no elevation adjustment. There's just a windage adjustment. And then for the windage adjustment, you can see all those scratch marks on my base right there because I took the screws out and I whacked and whacked and whacked and whacked with a brass hammer trying to get it to move over. I even took off some of the, 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 the Cerakote finish on the pistol itself, trying to get the windage to, to adjust. I never got it to adjust. But then, even then, my elevation, we'll take off the sight in a second and, and show you, my elevation was like six inches high, and that's unadjustable. So that part was not cool, but everything else about the pistol has run great. The only malfunctions I've gotten are suppressor-induced. So if, you know, suppressor's one, it'll make it really dirty. Two, it will uh, it gets sluggish if it's, if it's not oiled correctly. And so I started to get some of these not returned to battery. And, well, it's, it's, it's going to be just fine now. I, I lubed it up again. And I'd have to push in on that side, the, the side charging handle. So that was actually kind of cool that I could use just without breaking grip, just push that forward. That's a suppressor issue. If I would have taken it off, which it comes threaded, but it's backwards. Backwards is a left-handed, that 13 and a half, uh, or, or the 13 thread pitch. So, so while you're saving money to get you, uh, you know, you don't have to buy an aftermarket barrel that would be threaded because this is it's got some flat flutes on it kind of cool it is salient arms part as well and it has a really cool um the thread protector because it's got the hex uh parts on it i was like that that looks nice i had to buy a new piston for my 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 revolution anyway so you know it's, it's kind of it, it, it's hit or miss there and so uh, some of their newer models i did see come with the standard half by 28 right-handed threads so maybe this one will be modified in the future as well um, I am running this Viridian X-F5L camera and laser and light on it and it's really cool running it in tandem with the RMR because I can see with, with one eye, okay, with my, my right eye sees the red dot, my left eye sees the green and it overlays on the target. Pretty cool and uh, especially at night it's a lot of fun and it's, it's got the light and all the well. The light's not too bright but the camera's pretty cool. I think that is, oh, magazines, 15 round magazine and an 18 round with the extended. And then finally, one more complaint. Oh, and th th it comes with the back straps. You know, that's the normal kind of stuff pistols nowadays come with. That's everything in the box that's important besides brushes and locks. This is their holster. And if you look hard, it looks a lot like a Serpa, but it's almost worse than a Serpa. A Serpa has a bad reputation because you're pushing pressure with your trigger, trigger finger, and that can make an unsafe situation. What happens? is you have to pull this to unlock your uh, unlock the holster retention. So when you are pulling this and drawing your holster at the same time, that is a terrible and unsafe situation because you're putting pressure on that and you have to because you have to be pushing pressure, you can't release because the gun's starting to come up. So if you're doing this in a speed situation, it is very likely that you might fall into your trigger uh, well early and set that gun off. So no, just, just it's great that it comes with a holster, but it's a terrible design for safety-wise, in my opinion, unless you're going to run it with a chamber empty. So that's enough now. Let's shut up and shoot. So to start with accuracy tests, we're going to start at 10 yards. And I was like, I had to get my rangefinder out because I was like, this just feels way too close. So um, anyway, I got the laser on. Maybe it'll come on camera. The green laser is quite nice and bright. But, uh, oh, I need to wipe that RMR. It's getting, the suppressor blow get, back gets bad on these things. We're just gonna go for that gnome target. Hey, let's shoot him in the head. Let's do that. Let's see how close our zero is. This is that Angel Fire 147. <laughs> Get the zoom in. 
<laughs> All right, I think we did pretty good on him. So uh, 10 yards, kind of rapid fire, hey, one splatter, I like it. Yeah. All right, so right on that guy right there, there's a, one of those T hostage heads, so even smaller, but I figured, man, our other group looks so good, we can, we can try to get that a good bit. Uh, don't worry, there's more berm behind it than you can see on camera, because the angle's all different, so I got a lot of berm behind me. All right, shut up and shoot. Oh, Nick, got it. Nice. I mean, that's pretty great. So just, just, I'm having fun with the accuracy of this thing. Oh, what else can we do? I guess we can back up, right? We have our Primo Targets plate rack right there. Well, let's just see what we can do at 50 yards. So it's still the Angel Fire 147. I'm getting to the bottom of the box though. So this will be the only take. Well, let's turn the camera on, even though I can't see the laser. Oh, I can see it. Oh, there was one of those malfunctions that just the suppressor's making it sluggish. But that's, you can't blame that on the gun because it, it does that to almost every gun sometimes. I was robbed. That's weird, it's not falling. I wonder if I'm low. Yeah, I was low. That was a miss. There we go. Nice. What do we got left? Two. Oh, I got plates down low. Got it. Sweet. So I wanted to put the uh, rear sight back on just to show you how far off it was and so we're going to print that on paper or steel I picked up some of these samples the other day. Look at that. Voila! And they're eco-friendly because you can just slap them up on it. That was sharp. That's just wood on a tree, right? And now we have our target. Stick. That sucks. See how we do. I'm already missing my slide charging handle. I got used to that way too quick. All right, same ammo, 147 grain uh, Angel Fire. Oh, I brought some 115s too. We'll do that right after this. All right, just going dead center, and we'll see how high it was. It's been a while since I've shot it with the irons. All right, so we are shooting a lot closer than I was playing around earlier because, you know, 10 yards is real close for me. But uh, so we're, we're about two inches high, though, and that's holding with the front sight cutting that X in half. So sure, a six o'clock hold would have dropped it a little, but not enough. I mean, I'd have to aim here to hit there. So at 10 yards, that's pretty crazy hold. Let's stick these on and we will try with some 115 grains and see what that looks like. All right, the Angel Fire 115s. I keep these for defensive training because they have a little more recoil and when I'm doing defensive training, I usually don't need subsonic for a suppressor. All right, I'll see how they work. All right, so it looked like, oh cool. <laughs> Yeah, well that confirms that it's mostly shooting just as high when we center punched our uh, patch. Uh, one of those went way right and one was here. Maybe I slapped it. I don't know. But the, for the majority, our three were in the same height, maybe just a half inch lower overall. So uh, that doesn't seem like a huge deal, but when I'm used to shooting, you know, 30 plus yards with pistols, okay, I know, I just, I just goof off a lot. But... You know, when, when I'm when I'm that far back, I have to aim six to eight inches low, so meh, not so much. But I'm glad the tree tree did a good job and held that target up, right? Well, we'll just stop right here, guys. So, um, Canic TP9 Combat Elite, but there's a lot of other ones that are really. Uh, just more basic but they're stinking affordable because you're talking they start at like under 400 bucks if memory serves right the website had this listed at 850 uh, right under 850 that's the retail a higher 
open slash fun competition gun but don't want to pay a bunch of money this is reminds me of years back when fn fn t came out with their fnx tactical it has like almost the same box and kit okay with all the optics mounting and threaded barrel and just ready to rock but for half the price and so anyway y'all can check it out i'm just gonna shut up there thanks for watching and stay tuned we'll have some more stuff later bye Yeah!